Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the grace and the opportunity that you have given to us, even to gather at your feet this evening. Jehovah, we ask, O oh God, that the more we stay in your presence, the more of you we will receive. I make myself simple. I make my mouth an extension of yours. I believe you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you speak through me, that I will not only be a blessing to your people, but I will be a blessing to myself also. In the name of Jesus, that your word will come with precision and with power, and your name alone will be glorified. That tonight you will do the work of the miraculous. That you touch every man and every woman in every area of life where they desire you the most. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to speak on a title, uh, on a topic I have titled, Sure Anchor. And I'll be reading first from Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. It says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. Now, let's see that in the Amplified. It says, you will keep in perfect peace and constant, you keep in perfect and constant peace. The one whose mind is steadfast, that he is committed and focused on you in both inclination and character because he trusts and because he trusts and take, re, takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. Trust confidently in the Lord forever. He is your fortress, your shield, your banner. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock. The best of rocks. The rock of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me read one more scripture before we go so that we uh, would flow together. Isaiah 28 and just verse 16 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Let's see that also in the Amplified. Let's see it in the Amplified. It says, therefore, the Lord God, the Lord God says this. Listen carefully. I'm laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for the secure foundation, firmly placed. You who believe, who trust in rely on and adhere to that stone will not be disturbed or give away or give way in sudden panic no doubt these times and season that we are in our country right now and in the world over there is so much of panic everywhere because uh, of the way things are going but you remember that the up other tuesday when our pastor was preaching he talked about a man that has no anchor. Talked about a man that the wife said the man had no anchor. And as soon as he said that, he just dropped into my spirit that that's a message we need to look at. Sometimes I never knew I was going to preach here, but I was actually, you know, planning that I will preach that last Tuesday at uh, our Ologuero Center, right? That we should stay put on our anchor. When you say something is sure, it means that thing is certain. That thing is definite. That thing is something that is tangible. You can bank on it. You can, you can, you can bet on it. You can do anything because it is sure. When something is sure, it's as sure as you are looking at me. It's as sure as you are touching yourself. You know, when you touch yourself, you know you are touching yourself. Praise the Lord. So much is the love of God for us. And last Sunday, when our pastor was talking, you know, he spoke extensively about the mercy of God. 
And when he said that uh, there will be a queue and the people will line up and somebody will be coming trying to shut, like we say, you know, try to break, you know, through the, 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 the line. And they will say, no, go back. And by the time the people in charge will come, they will start distributing from behind instead of starting from the front. Or sometimes they just break the line into two. And say, okay, line here, line here. And that other guy that came late will be in front. You know, it has happened several times. And I remember as he was saying it, that the last time I went to the immigration office, you know, to renew my passport, the guy that gave me an appointment, when I got there, he wasn't there. When I called him, he said, I should go and wait in their waiting hall that he will join me very soon. And you know, they will come out to bring their files and they will call people in. So they came, at the bad time I got there was the time they called the first, or probably whatever said, she had called some people in. And as they went, a man just came back without files, he didn't bring any file. And he was just looking, he said, you come, you come, you come. He pointed to about six or seven or eight of us and said, come, follow me. Ah, I said, see God though. See God though. So as we got into the inner place where they do their capturing, the, first set, the set of people that they already called were seated. Guess what? When we got there, they asked for our names. They went and looked for our, uh, our jackets, our files, and uh, they attended to us before those people. So when pastor said that, it resonated so much with me because that is how God is. And I want us to know that the anchor we are talking about tonight is Jesus Christ. But what is an anchor? An anchor basically is a metallic or a, a, a device made of metal. And it has just one function. The function is to make sure that the ship, when it parts, is not drifted, you know, due to the wind or the current of the water. The only water that can be stabled or that can be contained, that the, the current can be reduced, is a controlled water body. Probably is in a container, but as soon as an external force is inserted on it, you will see the current. And that is why we were advised that um, we shouldn't, you know, when Jacob was talking or talking about Reuben, his son, he said it's as stable as water. You know, because of the current. Forget about the other part of it. Because of the current. So, when the anchor is not there, the ship is bound to be thrown here and there. It's bound to be, you know, the current as it moves. The ship will not be stable. But once the anchor is deployed, you will see that the ship will be stable. Because God wants us to be stable, even at this time, despite all the economic challenge all over the world, especially in our country. And guess what? The Lord will heal our country in the name of Jesus. So in Genesis chapter 49, when Jacob was talking about uh, Reuben, he said it's unstable as water. And in James 1 and 8, it says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know, he will just be doing that, like that, like that. So for a Christian... An anchor for a Christian represents safety. It represents uh, security. And it represents hope. Because in the hands of Jesus, we are perpetually safe. And when we remain there, our safety is continually guaranteed. As a matter of fact, in my profession, they say it is in perpetuity. It is in perpetuity. It is continuous. It cannot be broken. Because you are in the hands of the Lord. And when you are, you have made Jesus your anchor, there is hope for tomorrow. And that is why every day we wake up, we're able to lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for the gift of another day. Because there is hope. There is hope. So never give, never give up on hope, no matter whatever it is that is going on around you. Hope represents God and faith that keeps us steadfast and gives us the hope during trials and tribulations. So when our anchor is sure and things are happening, the devil is bringing his job. This one is doing that. That one is doing that. And your anchor is steady. 
because you have a sure foundation. Don't forget, that was where we started from. Our hope is in God. We have that foundation. We have Jesus as our base, as our support. And when we have that, you can be, you know, everything, will, you will see them. But you will not experience them. Amen. Because your own case is, you had, you had the, the testimony of our sister. And that can happen to just anybody. It can happen to anybody. Because as long as you have Jesus, you have that continuous protection, continuous safety, and hope. So storms of life will come, but it is hope and steadfastness and the connection to God in any circumstance, you know, that will give you the strength, the faith, and the resilience that you need in God. And how do you have that? It is only when your anchor is sure, when your anchor is strong. The only anchor that can keep a man and that can make a man to make anything happen is Jesus. Any other one, any other ground is a sinking sand. The only one that is stable is the one that has Jesus as his foundation. So as Christians, our hope symbolizes what gives us the confidence for now and the hope for the expected glorious future, which is Christ Jesus. So we are so much secured. And uh, the fact is, we believe that our tomorrow will be greater than our today. So don't worry about the disappointment of today. The Bible makes us to know that sufficient for the day are the evils thereof. But he said again that daily the Lord loads us with his benefits. So even if today had not been the way you planned it, even if today had not, been, had not worked out the way you wanted it, tomorrow presents a new day, a better day, and a glorious day. And that tomorrow you will see that tomorrow, after tomorrow, after tomorrow, after tomorrow still, the Bible says, the path of the righteous gets what? Brighter and brighter and brighter still. I love it when anytime I read in the Bible that though you, your beginning might be small, and that is like God. That is like God. Because it's there in the Bible that precept must be upon precept. Lie must be upon lie. Here a little, there a little. So, when you start small, it's not a problem. But when you remain small, then there calls for some, you know, some questions. So, your latter end will greatly increase. And I interpret that that even though January to 28th or 29th of October might have presented small, small things. As we go into November, get ready for greater things. Because the Lord will extend, will expand, and will ensure that we increase. Because that is like our God. Amen. So our choice is, about, is tomorrow. Your future. Our future is secured because we have an anchor in God. There is nothing that can make us to be perturbed. There is nothing that can make us to be disturbed. See what was written in that amplified. He said, We shall not or will not be disturbed or give away in sudden panic. Sudden panic. Ah, ah yeah, ha, ah, that. Ha. Price of this have gone up, price of that have gone down. Of, no, 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 no. You see, it's only in Nigeria that uh, you will buy a product today, you have used it, and you still want to sell it. You will sell it beyond the price you bought it. It's only in Nigeria that those things happen. But the law will cause there to be a reversal. I can't hear your amen. You don't want Nigeria to be good, Nee. The law will cause there to be a reversal. In the name of Jesus. You know, because the, the truth of the matter is that the amount that they were selling that thing where it was bought in the first place, maybe a year ago, and today has not changed. But because of the rate our, our, our 
currency is performing against the major currencies of the world. That is what is making it. But Naira will, get, will gain strength. Naira will gain strength. Naira will be stronger. Whether you like, whether you say amen or not, it will happen. And you will see it. You know, somebody said to me, and uh, we were discussing, and the pastor had been to their church before to preach. And uh, he said, why I like your pastor when he preaches is because he doesn't use examples that are far away. That he will preach about himself, preach about his wife, preach about his children, and he will drop the microphone. I said, that is true. I said, that is correct. So the same person who watched Pastor Dutton on Sunday, when he preached about his mom, preached about his mother-in-law, preached about his wife, you know, and he said, it's the same spirit. I said, it's the same spirit. Praise the Lord. Because all that he said, all that our pastor said on Sunday, you can relate with them. If he has said that happened to somebody somewhere, 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 you know, extended, 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 you will begin to think, uh, but if you need to know, some people here knew that story before he said it. And some people were encouraged because of that story that he told. And some people can still confirm the veracity, the authenticity, and otherwise of those stories. Praise the Lord. So, we should know that no matter what it is, our tomorrow is better. So, things are very difficult at the time, at this time, but people are still prospering, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. A lot of people are still making, not just making hands meet, making good, doing good deals. And it's not everybody that you see that rides big car is a thief. All right? It's not everyone that buys a new car this time that has stolen money. Praise the Lord. People are making money genuinely. May you be the next success story in the name of Jesus. And he says in Philippians 1 and 6, he says, uh, And I am sure of this, that he who begins a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So, what do you do? You keep up alive. If God had promised that, if God has said that, if God says he that, he that has begun something that is able to finish it, what else do you need? It's just to stay with the manual. It's just to stay under his guidance. It's just to stay with him and ensure that you just follow him through. And as long as you do that, in Job 13 and 16, it says, though his name me, I will open him. Though his name me, I will open him. Because what? is a very, very reliable God. Our God is reliable. He will do it. If he's done it before, he will do it again. And Job 14, 7, uh, 14, 14 says, If a man die, shall he live again? He says, All the days of my heart service, I will wait till my change come. Tell your neighbor, wait till your change is here. Your change is here. So what will make the difference or the change that you want is the hope that you have in the sure anchor of Jesus. If you want to change, anything that will make that change to happen, everything is in Christ Jesus. Without Jesus, there's nothing that a man can amount to. Let him run from here to there. Let him do this. Let him do that. Yesterday, uh, I passed by a place uh, uh, somewhere in Bodija. I used to know the man that owns the land, I mean the house, very hard, big land and all that. And I just looked. I said, ah! If it were to be what people can amass on earth that will determine how long they will live on earth, some people will never die. You know, two years, three years, no, about four years now, during the uh, Buhari regime, you know, there was this civil servant that they said had 300 and something houses. He was a, a civil servant. Civil servant. Over 300 houses. In Abuja, in Lagos, everywhere, scattered all over the country. But see, all those things, they don't count for what God expects from us. What counts 
is our relationship with God and how people will relate with us now and after. Because if you have all those things and still nobody's, you know, nobody is uh, saying anything that is of printable stuff about you, you still have not done justice to what God will want you to do. And in Job 14, 7 to 9, it says, for there is a hope for a tree, if you be cut down, that it will sprout again. And its tender shoot will not cease. Though its fruit, its, its root may grow old in the earth. That is, all hope like lost. So what is it that you are going through now? Ah, that business has gone. Oh, that admission has gone. Oh, that connection has gone. I want to let you know. Just as we are about to read now, it says, and the storm may die in the ground. When you say something dies, it means that, that should be the end of that thing. But see what God says. He said, yet are the saint of water. Not that the rushing of water are the saint. So, it just smells. When somebody uses color or perfume and all that, you don't see it. But you perceive it. So, when that thing that is dead, just perceive, just perceiving the water, what do you say? It will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. It will revive. Whatever it is that is dead in your hand, they are revived right now. Every hope, every aspiration, they are revived right now. In the name of Jesus. Just trust and keep believing God. In Luke 21 and 22, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my world will never pass away. If he had promised us a new beginnings, new beginnings, till 31st of December, 2024, new beginnings still. He says, fresh deal, till 31st of December, 2023, fresh deal. Daily. Deal comes daily in the morning. So every day, receive your own fresh deal. Receive the freshness of the deal. Every day. Don't ever give lose hope. Don't ever give up on yourself. Things may look like it. You may be seeing it, like I said, because we are not blind. We hear it. We see it. Look at the testimony of the accident that that, that sister gave. If you find out, it might not be that the driver was reckless. It must be as a result of the road that we travel on in this country. I have not said that it's not reckless. So. And I have not said that it's reckless. But it might be as a result of failure on the road. No, you, just, you are just driving. And you just get to a point and you just saw port O. Naturally, as a driver, what do you do? You want to slow your speed and the reflex might be too hard. And by the time you press it, so, we need to know that whatever it is that God has said, God is able to do it. He says, not a word that has spoken will go unfulfilled. He said, is our time or is my time of mercy. But I said, it is my time of divine mercy. Mercy. You know, the Bible makes us to know that one day David woke up Second Kings, uh, I, I mean, Second Samuel chapter 9, he woke up and he said, who is here, who is left in the house of Saul that I may show him mercy? He just woke up and God just inspired him. Just, just, God just made him to just, ah, Jonathan was a very good friend. There's something that I must do. I must repay my friend. Listen, Book of Remembrance is being opened concerning you. I said, Book of Remembrance is being opened concerning you. In the name of Jesus, Mephibosheth in his widest imagination will never thought that he would smell or see the palace. Talkless of sleeping in the palace. Talkless of sitting and dining with the king. But see what the Lord can do. God makes things happen by his own hand. God changes things. God arranges things. And God will arrange things for you. In the name of Jesus. He didn't have to go and send somebody. Tell David, oh, 
Jonathan, Jonathan, your friend, his son is here in Lord the Bible. Tell, tell him he's here. I'm suffering. I'm suffering. Oh, tell him. Oh, help me tell him. Help me tell him. You have seen on social media that they will come and some people will say, help me share it until he gets to the right. No, he didn't go on the social media. He didn't have to go and start to tell people, please let me tell him. Please let me tell him. Please let me. No. But God inspired him. He could not. He just woke up. And God just put it in his heart. And may that be your portion. May, be, may you be remembered in the name of Jesus. So, for us to enjoy the sure anchor, you must, number one, you must keep trusting in the word. God's word never expires. It never expires. Once he has sent the word, once he has sent it, just hold on to it. Just grab it. Just hold on to it. Just make sure that you don't do anything that can negate that word. Make sure that you keep standing in the word. It is my time of divine mercy. Lord, be merciful unto me. Because the Bible says you, will be, you, 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 you are merciful and gracious. And that is your attribute. That is who you are. Be merciful unto me. I have no strength of my own. I have got no power of my own. I don't know nobody. And guess what? Most of those people that sometimes that we felt that we know, most of the time, they don't want us to know that, that they are as useful, as powerful, as uh, influential as we thought. But the word of God is always steady. His word is always yea and amen. You can always rely on God's word. God's word is the best thing we should sit with, we should sleep with, we should rise with. You know, in Luke chapter 7, I don't want to read, talking about the centurion, when he sent people to go help him tell Jesus to come and help heal his servant and all that. And they went and told Jesus that this man is a nice guy. He built us a synagogue. Please come, come and help or come and help him to come and pray for the boy and all that and all that. And the Bible said, why he was still on the way, he sent a message. No, you don't need to come. Just send the word. Just send the word. So that is the power in the word. That is the power that the word of God carries. The word of God does not know boundaries. It breaks barriers. It breaks things. It just go on and on. As long as you believe it in your heart, you will have it. And then you must keep confessing the word. Keep confessing the word. Keep confessing the word. It's my time of divine mercy. It's my time of divine favor. It's my time of unexpected grace. Grace attends to me. Mercy attend my part. You know, you just keep confessing it and keep believing the word of God. You must keep believing that if it has worked for A, it must work for me. If it has worked for B, it must work for me. If it has worked at all, it must work for me. And it will work because the word of God is always working. The word of God is always working. So you must keep believing the word. You must keep obeying the word. Sometimes when things are, you know, when we have options, when we have options that we want to weigh from, then our reasoning, our logic, our training, you know, then comes to play. Then you start to rationalize which one of these should I obey. So, and the Bible wants us to know that when God has said something, that is exactly what it means. So, the word is everything that is. The word is everything that is. The word of God. You must never joke with the word of God. God's word never, never, can never expire. Peter walked on that word. He said, if it be you, Christ, bid me to come on water. And Jesus said, come. It's just the word. So, tonight, what is the word that you have heard? I have told you this night that the anchor that you need, the sure anchor is Jesus. Anchor. 
Don't be like that man that, that his testimony is that he doesn't have anchor. Anchor is a backup. Anchor is a backbone. Anchor is something that you can, you can, you can, you can, you know, like the back end of computer. That if anything goes, if everything goes wrong, and you are able to have access to the back end, the computer will come up again. Hallelujah. That is the anchor that I've come to talk to you about. Anchor that is so sure. Anchor that is dependable. Anchor that is reliable. Anchor that you can always call on and it will answer you. Say says, any time, any day, God is ever present. Say, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And if God is in the midst of them, what do you think is, is there for? Is there only to do one thing, just to answer us. So tonight, you will present your needs to God. You will talk to God yourself. And I will pray as, I, as the Lord will enable me. And I will be expecting your testimonies in the name of Jesus. So tonight, what is it that you want the anchor to do for you? I've told you, the anchor is the Lord Jesus. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Just assume a position that Jesus is the one sitting next beside you. Forget about the person that is sitting next to you. Assume that Jesus is the one sitting next to you. And now converse with him. Talk to him. Ask him something. Tell him something. That is how real the Lord is in our midst tonight. Talk to him. Pull down your heads and talk to your God. Ask him for his help. Ask him for his mercy that he has, he has, he has, he, he has uh, promised. Ask him for anything and just anything. Just speak to him. Just speak to him. Speak to your father. He is your father. He is my father. Talk to him. Talk to him. Speak to him. He wants to hear you speak to him. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for tonight. And thank you for all that your children has presented as requests. You, the sure anchor, you are the answer to all of those things. And Lord, I ask that in your mercy, you will visit each and every one of us tonight in the name of Jesus. That Lord, we all shall return next week, Tuesday, with huge and great testimonies. All to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus. If there's a need in the house that is uh, so much, you so much require. You so much require and you want us to pray about it. Just lift up your hand and put it down. So that I know I'm praying for someone. Thank you. Thank you. Pull those hands down. Pull those hands down. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all of these people. Lord, my, hands are, uh, my hand is also up. And I ask, oh God, that in your mercy, oh God, you will minister to all of these our concerns. That Lord, by the time we return again next week, they have turned to testimonies. All to the glory and honor of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. See you at the very top. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.